Hey everybody, this is Kevin Waddles, double CCIA and Cisco Press author. And in this video, I want to tell you about some ways that you can save time on your CCIA lab. Because on the lab, if you've ever taken one, you know that time, it's a precious commodity. And there's all sorts of opinions and strategies out there about how to best save time. Some people, for example, recommend that you spend the first 30 minutes of your lab carefully reading through that lab manual so that you'll know what's coming up. Other people, and I'm in this other camp, suggests that you don't spend anywhere near that much time. I recommend that you read through the lab, you skim through it very quickly, maybe making some notes on major design aspects of the lab, big things to keep in mind. Because for me, if I were to spend 30 minutes reading through the lab manual very, very carefully, there would be so much detail that I wouldn't remember it anyway. So I would rather save time and just take some notes as I quickly skim through the lab guide. But the purpose of this video is to show you how to use something called router preconfigs. This strategy can hopefully help you squeeze out a little bit of extra time that would otherwise be consumed or, or wasted as you take your CCA lab. I remember after passing my first lab in routing and switching, I made the comment that if I had not had a typing class in high school or college, then I would not have passed the lab because there was so much typing to do on the lab. So I want to minimize the number of keystrokes I have to make. And I don't want to just be sitting around while the router is trying to look something up like from a DNS server. So check out this really basic strategy of creating a pre-configuration file. You can do this in a text document there in the lab and then just paste it into your routers or switches. Let me walk you through a few of the big commands I'm going to be focused on and then I'll go out to a live interface and we'll take a look at these time savers. The first one is the exec hyphen timeout command followed by a couple of zeros. If you're connected via a console or a VTY line going into your router, the clock is ticking as soon as you log in. If you are inactive on that line for a period of time, you're going to be timed out and you'll have to get reconnected and log back in again. You don't want to have to do that on the lab. So what I like to do is say, don't time out my connection. And to do that, we can say the timeout period is zero minutes and zero seconds, which means never time me out. Now, please hear me on this. This is not a best practice recommendation for the real world for production equipment, but it's a time saver for the lab. Something else that can really slow us down is we're typing along and you get those syslog messages popping up on your console and right in the middle of a command you were typing, you've got all this gibberish and it's really difficult to see, okay, what have I typed? And you know, let's just backspace and let's start all over again. The logging synchronous command given in a line configuration mode can realize that, oh, they were in the middle of typing something when this syslog message popped up on the screen. So what the logging synchronous command will do is paste back in what we had already typed on the previous line before we were so rudely interrupted by that syslog message. Something else I like to do is to, in global configuration mode, say no IP domain hyphen lookup. Otherwise, if I'm trying to type in a legitimate Cisco IOS command and I mistype it, I misspell something perhaps, Cisco IOS is going to think that I'm trying to give a DNS name and it tries to go look it up and that's going to take some time to time out. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to say don't go query a DNS server to try to look up any text strings that I enter that you might not recognize. Odds are I've just mistyped something. Another time saver is the alias command. And you might want to give a collection of these depending on what commands you find yourself using frequently in the lab. Instead of typing out a big long string and maybe popping the output to something else, you could just create an alias of maybe two or three characters. You enter those two or three characters and suddenly that gets translated into this much longer command. Now let's go out to a live interface and I want to show you how we can actually issue these commands and in what configuration mode they're issued. Here on router R1, let's go into global configuration mode and let's go into line configuration mode for the console line, con0. And the exec hyphen timeout zero space zero command is going to say do not time my connection out if I'm connected via the console. And in a moment I'm going to do the same thing for my VTY lines. But while I'm here in the console line configuration mode, if I happen to be connected that way, I want to give the logging synchronous command. So if I'm typing something and a syslog message inserts itself in the midst of my command, what I had previously typed gets pasted back on the screen so I can just continue typing after the syslog message pops up. Let's give those same commands for our VTY lines. I'll say line VTY 0 15 for my 16 VTY lines 
And I'll just arrow up and enter those commands again, exec timeout 00, and logging synchronous. Now, in global configuration mode, let's say that we don't want some misspelled command to be interpreted as a DNS name where the router takes it upon itself to go try to resolve this from a DNS server, which it might not even be configured with. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to say no IP domain hyphen lookup. That can save several seconds for every time you mistype something. And now let's give a couple of those alias commands we were talking about. Still in global configuration mode, I'm gonna say alias exec. And now I put in what the alias is, the command that I need to memorize for this lab attempt. I'm gonna say src for show router configuration. Perhaps I wanna go take a look at what's configured under OSPF or RIP or BGP or EIGRP router configuration mode. What I could type out is show run pipe to section router, but instead of doing that, I can just type in SRC instead. Here's the way I train SRC. I say, this is gonna be expanded to the command show run pipe to section router. Let's do another one. I'll say alias exec. This time, let's do my favorite Cisco IOS command. It's show IP interface brief. It's a great command. It shows me what interfaces I have on a router. It shows me if they're up or if they're down. It shows me if they have an IP address. If they do, it shows me how the IP address was obtained. But instead of typing out show IP interface brief every time, I just want to type in SIB for show interface brief, we'll say. And I'll say show IP interface brief. Now let's go test it. If I go into privilege mode and say SRC, it does a show run pipe to section router and it comes back and it shows me any router configurations I might have. Here in this example, I've just configured OSPF. Let's do SIB and see if it does a show IP interface brief. It sure does. It shows that I've got three interfaces. It shows a couple of IP addresses. It shows that the IP addresses were configured manually and it shows that those bottom two interfaces are in the upstate. That's a look at how we can quickly type up a document in a text file we could have put all those commands in a text file and then just quickly copied and pasted them into routers and switches in our CCA lab.